Hello my schoolers, you welcome to my school YouTube channel. My name is Emmanuel and today we'll be looking at nuclear chemistry in today's video lesson. Please stick around, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. You welcome back to my school YouTube channel and like I said earlier on today we'll be looking at nuclear chemistry. Underneath that we'll be looking at what radioactivity is, what are the different types and properties of radiations that we have. We'll also be looking at nuclear reactions, what kind of reactions take place in nucleus. Away from that we'll be considering simple equations, their uses, applications, of natural and artificial radioactivity. We'll be looking at what half-life is. How do we calculate the half-life, the time it takes for the nucleus of an atom to decay. And then lastly, we'll be looking at the differences between nuclear and chemical reactions. Now, let's delve into it. In nuclear chemistry, is an aspect of chemistry that is concerned with chemical reaction in which the nuclei of atoms are involved. Isotopes are atoms of the same elements having the same atomic number but different atomic masses or mass numbers. We've said that earlier on in the previous video lessons we had that isotopes are two or more atoms of the same element having the same atomic number or number of protons but different atomic masses or mass number and this is due to the fact that the number of neutrons are different for instance the isotopes of chlorine are chlorine 35 and then chlorine 37 so these are isotopes for this we have carbon also having about three different isotopes carbon 12 carbon 13 and carbon 14 these isotopes are stable I mean these two. They are stables. Why? Because the number of both the neutron and protons in each are about equal or they have a comparable ratio. But in nuclear chemistry, it was observed that the neutron-proton ratio in the nuclei of some elements are not comparable. That is, the neutron-proton ratio is the proportionate they are not almost the same the values the ratio are not almost the same in nuclear chemistry so because of that we tend to talk about radioactive so those elements are not stable okay so in that kind of element we can have radioactivity taking place in them because the ratio of the neutron to protons they are not about the same okay they are disproportionate so that is why isotopes are stable because their number of the ratio of the number of uh, proton to neutron are actually you know about the same almost equal okay but in nuclear chemistry we have elements that are not stable okay because they are not stable they have numbers of neutrons and protons the ratio are disproportionate they are not the same thing okay so that is why they will have to keep disintegrating decaying until they attain a stable portion let's move on to the next slide the number of neutrons in the nucleus of an atom may be too many when you compare them to the number of protons that are in that particular atom in, and vice versa. In some cases, it could be that the number of protons are more than the number of neutrons in that case. So in that situation, because the number of neutrons and protons are not the same or they are far away from each other in terms of differences. So in that situation, you discover that that atom will be unstable okay so what shows the stability of an atom number of neutron to proton okay if you compare the ratio if they are equal or almost around the same thing we say it is and that's why we say we have uh, what we call isotopes okay the atomic numbers are the same but the mass numbers are different when the situation occurs the resulting isotopes are said to be unstable and therefore they are called unstable isotopes unstable isotopes are also known as radioactive elements so whether you call them radioactive elements or you call them unstable isotopes we are saying the same thing so 
radioactive elements are elements that are unstable they are isotopes that are unstable okay so naturally they want to become stable and how do they do that it is by emitting some kind of radiations it's when they emit some radiations or when they disintegrate they break down into smaller smaller you know uh, no atoms it could be for another element spontaneously they do that in order to what to now equalize the number of protons that are in the atom to the number of neutrons that are in the atom so when they do that the number of neutron to proton ratio becomes normalized or equalized so they become stable but once the number the ratio of number of neutrons to protons are not the same okay we say we have an unstable isotope or we call them radioactive elements so unstable isotope is a radioactive isotope or element which spontaneously emits radiation let's move on to the next slide what then is radioactivity you can say radioactivity can be defined as the spontaneous emission of radiation it continues okay spontaneously it continues until it attains a stable stage okay so radioactivity is the spontaneous emission of radiation by radioactive elements it's not all elements that can undergo radiation okay for instance calcium okay is stable okay it has an uh, atomic mass of uh, 40 and then it has atomic number of 20 okay if you find out you discover that the number of proton is 20 the number of neutron is also 20 so in that case that is a stable element so radioactivity will not take place there because the number of neutron to protons are actually the same so that is a stable you know uh, element okay but radioactive elements are elements that are not stable they are unstable isotopes so for those kind of ones there will be spontaneous emission of radiation they continue to disintegrate okay and emit energy and emit radiation until they have gotten to the stability stage how did we come about radioactivity that is the discovery now some years ago in 1896 Henry Bacquerel performed an experiment accidentally when I mean accidentally he didn't even know himself okay he just got some uh, photographic plates okay he put them and wrapped them in a black paper so then he kept them inside the drawer okay while he kept them there in that drawer in the same drawer he kept some uranium salts inside of that same drawer and then he left so after some days he came back he wanted to get a photographic plate and then when he bought it i discovered that ah, the color of the you know plates has turned to black it is now black in ah, so he was wondering what could have happened so it's possible that there was a kind of radiation have been emitted okay from maybe the uranium salt to make the photographic plate also take the color of that paper in which it was wrapped in okay so it was first discovered by Becquerel okay in the year 1896 okay so after some controlled experiments like I said something earlier on in the previous videos we've had that scientists don't just come up with with theory okay when they observe that something has taken place they will carry out experiments and other scientists will also carry out several experiments on it to ensure that and to ascertain what has been discovered by this until it is proven correctly it becomes a law or it becomes a principle so after some controlled experiments were conducted he concluded that the uranium salt were actually responsible for emitting an unknown radiation which blackened the film and then in 1898 Marie and Pierre Curie discovered that thorium of course that's an element polonium that's another element and radium also produced radiation so based on that the invisible rays produced by the radioactive elements are now what we call radiation so when we talk about radiation radiation are the invisible rays you can't see them physically as the radiation is taking place okay as as they are radiating you can't see they can just see that oh something is happening but they are invisible okay so invisible rays that are produced by not just an element a radioactive element are what we refer to as radiation let's move on to the next slide a great quantity of energy known as the nuclear energy 
is released during radioactivity. Every radioactive element will always emit some kind of energy. Okay, energy is always given up, and that kind of energy is not just any, I will call it a nuclear energy because it is emitted from the nucleus. Okay, nucleus. Remember, nucleus, when we talked about atomic structure, nucleus is at the center of an atom. Okay, and that is where the mass of that element. So, the element, the radioactive elements, tend to you know, give up some kind of energy, some amount of energy. Okay, quantum. Remember, we talked about quantum energy in that. You know, particular uh, atom, okay, but that kind of energy that is given up is what we refer to as nuclear energy. Energy is always released during radioactivity. So, radioactive elements emit radiations. The rate at which each radioactive element emits radiation is neither temperature nor pressure dependent. The temperature it does not depend on it. The radioactive element will emit. Uh, you know, radiation. Remember, we said it does that spontaneously. So it does not need maybe uh, because the temperature is low or temperature is right that will determine if it should take place low or the pressure is high or the pressure is low. No, it is not a uh, temperature or pressure dependent. Okay, for it to emit the radiation that we have. So all types of radiation become less intense as they travel further away from the radioactive material. The reason is because the particles or rays become more spread. I'm going to show it to you so that you can understand better what you do. So I'm going to light this. Okay. Okay. You can see this. Now, if I bring this to this, it becomes more intense. Okay. You can neither see, but if I bring it far away, it will spread. You can see this now spreading out. Okay. The particles or the ray, this can be likened to be the radiation, though even though we don't see physically, so this is how it works. So the radiation, the rays will be spreading out. But if it is brought closer, okay, to this, you will see that it will compress, you know, the rays. It will not allow it to spread out like it could be. So that's what we, what we say that all the types of radiation, they become less intense as they travel further away from the radioactive material. This is the radioactive material now. This can be the radioactive element, okay? As the radiation is taking place now, the radiation will become less intense, okay? As they travel away from, further away from the radioactive. But if it is brought closer, you discover that what? It will compress, okay? And it will not spread out. But if it is, you know, brought this way, the rays will travel far. It will spread out more. But if you bring it closer, the closer you bring this, the more it will compress that and the rays will be able to what to pass through the you know the element so this is because the particles or rays become more spread out okay once they are far away once they are far away they travel far away from the radioactive material let's move on to the next slide now there are types of radiation and their detection the thicker the substance the more the radiation is absorbed so if we have the substance less thick that is not very thick okay you will find out that the radiation will be less absorbed so the thicker the substance when we talk about substance the, the substance that is undergoing radiation the more the radiation is absorbed into that substance that's why you discover that x-ray okay when x-rays will be shot you want to take x-ray radiation maybe in the lab or somewhere okay the 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 equipment is taken far away okay like remember that this radiation we don't see them the rays the radiation we don't see them okay but it happens we can't see them physically with our naked eyes but by the time it is done out you see the film oh this is the part that has been done out but how does it happen it is through what radiation that we have so we have majorly three types of radiation these three types of radiation penetrate materials in different ways and they are alpha rays beta rays and gamma rays alpha rays beta rays and gamma rays now we've come to the end of the preview of this video lesson if you want to have access to the full video please click on the link in the description below that takes you to the my school website where you have access to subscribe please subscribe and in the full video we'll be looking at the different explanation definitions and characteristics of the types of radiation we'll be looking at half-life some calculations on it and then we'll be looking at differences between nuclear reaction and chemical reaction 
Now, I believe you enjoyed this content. If yes, please don't forget to click the like button, hit the subscribe button, and finally, tap the notification bell to keep you notified once we upload our next video lessons.